Hello and welcome to the high level overview of the Maximal Inspection Supervisor Work Center Managed Inspection Forms. My name is Elda Lane and I'm a principal consultant with Aquatar Solutions. Our objectives today is to go over how to create and activate a form, how to select what type of form you want to create, talk about the different types of questions and responses you can create, how to duplicate a form or question, and how to revise a form. Access to the Managed Inspection Forms Work Center is normally given to a user whose role is that of an inspection supervisor. And basically, what that person does is they take a paper-based inspection form, similar to this image here, and they convert it to an electronic form so that the inspector can conduct inspections on a mobile device. Let's jump over to the Work Center login screen. I'm going to log in as myself. And once I successfully log into the Work Center, the inspection form library is displayed. It is here that I can see existing inspection forms. I can see the status of those on each one of these form cards. I can see whether it's an active, active, and draft. What's the name of the form, the number assigned to it. If I'm looking at the first revision or the first um, creation of this form, or if it's been revised and there are several versions of this form, I can see that as well. Okay. I'm going to create a new form. So I'm going to click the Create Form button and I'm going to give the form a name, the 21 Inspection. Here, where it says select a form type, I could select what type of form I'm creating. Is it an audit form, condition assessment, an inspection form, or investigation? This one is going to be inspection. Form instructions are optional, but I'm going to type in here complete the inspection form. and save. Now I'm ready to start adding questions. So I'm going to click the Add Question button. And under the Response Fields column, there are several types of questions that, and responses that I can create. There's an asset data where I could prompt the user or have a question where I'm asking the user to check the meter reading. Just a note there is that the meter reading that you want the user to check that meter record has to already exist in the meter application. So for example, if you want to use it to check run hours, check the temperature of an asset, check the odometer, those meter records have to already exist because you're going to reference them when you create your question. Some other response fields or type of questions that you can create is a date entry type of question, where they have to enter a date only or a time or date and time, a media um, response. You may want them to upload a photo or a video. Numeric entry where you give them certain values and they have to select the value. A single choice where you may give them certain text that they have to um, select from or just an open text entry like a comment or they're adding additional information. So for this one, I'm going to select single choice. And I'm going to say check tire tread. The description of my question is check the front and rear tires. Now I'm going to make it simple here. I can have multiple options, but remember they only can um, select one. I'm going to just make it pass and fail. You have the ability to select an icon, so when it's passed, they see the check mark, and when it's failed, they see the X. Is that question required? They must answer it before they can complete that inspection form. Yes. And I'm done. My first question is displayed. Now, instead of hitting the add question again to create a new one, 
I don't want to have to put pass and fail and required again. So what I'm going to do here is duplicate this question. And then edit. This new one. And I'm going to add here. Change the the, um, the text here to check body panels and bumpers. And I want that question to also be the description, so I will overwrite that. I don't have to enter pass, fail, and required again, and I'm done. And then I'm going to repeat that for the next one. Duplicate, edit, overwrite, check, heat belt, copy that, paste it here. Leave that at pass fail, duplicate, edit, on, copy, paste, done, duplicate, edit. Now on this one, I actually want this to be a comment, so I don't want it to be a single choice answer. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to delete this response field and select the text response. So here I'm going to just put comments. Here and yes, it is required. Actually change this to enter additional information um, and leave it there and hit done. Okay, I have five questions listed. Now I want to group them. So I'm going to check the first and second, create a group, and I'm going to call this group exterior. Create number two and three, create a group, click the create a group button, and I'm going to call this interior. Select my last one, create a group, and call it additional information. Okay. Now I can save it, and it's still in draft mode, so I still have the ability to say, no, I created this by mistake, I want to delete it, or I can go in and make additional changes. But also from here, I can make it active. So I'm going to click here and make this form active. Now to return to the form library down here at the bottom, I can click form library and I can see my new inspection form is displayed. It shows that it was created June 30th, 2020 at 12 17 p.m. There's only one revision. It is active. This is the description of the form and the number assigned to it. Now, if I want to go in and say, oh, there's a couple of more things I want to add on here. Let me click on here and let me create a revision because my pencil is no longer here. Once the um, inspection form becomes active, you can no longer edit by clicking on the pencil. You actually have to revise it. So I'm gonna create a revision, say why I'm revising it. I'm adding questions. Now I can click the pencil and I can add a new question here. So I'm gonna add a question and I'm gonna make it a single choice and it's going to say check tire pressure. Because I did not duplicate it, I'm going to have to select pass, fail, pick my icons again. And yes, this is required and now I'm done. Now notice I just added check tire pressure, but it fell under additional information. The drag and drop functionality allows you to take that one and drag it, just simply drag it up where it, the group that it belongs to. So now it's here. And if you want to rearrange these, you could do that as well. So now I have three 
questions under exterior, two under interior, and one under additional comments. Now I want to save it. Once I turn this revised or change the status of this revised um, inspection form to active, Maximo will change the original or the, the, the previous version to revise. So now the new one is the active one. When an inspector is going out to conduct an inspection, they will see the latest and greatest. Okay, so now I'm going to return to the form library. And you can see here that I have my inspection form and it shows now I'm looking at revision two. And it is active. Okay. Now before we conclude, I want to jump back to the presentation and go over some key takeaways. I want to leave you with some key takeaways. One is that the Inspection Supervisor Work Center, which is the managed inspection form, it allows you to create electronic forms. And basically you're converting your paper-based form to an electronic form. If you don't have a paper-based form, but you have a, a form you want to create, just outline it on a piece of paper or in Word or Excel or some um, some application and use that as a guide when you're creating that form in the work center. The second point is that you want to make sure that inspection form is active. It has to be active for the inspector to access and use that form. Take advantage of the drag and drop functionality that allows you to rearrange the questions. You could rearrange it within the same group or you can move one like I did when I added tire pressure. I actually had to move it from the comments group or the additional information group up to the um, exterior group. Also the duplicate functionality. You can use that for the form as well as the questions. If you already have the question outlined out, outlined with pass, fail, your icons, your color codes, then you could just duplicate it and all you have to do is overwrite the question and description. Form questions can be required or they can be optional. And you have the ability to um, set up your response with a color code so they see gray or green depending on their response and you also can associate an icon with the response that's where i had the check mark if it was passed and the x if it was failed if the um if the question that was asked failed okay so this concludes our session and i would like to thank you for your time